Sir, could you expand on soldier readiness management and how it pertains to soldier replacements and unit manning? What? <laughs> Where'd that come from? The, who's your instructor? <laughs> who's planted that? Uh, all right. That's probably way too long of a question. Soldier readiness management and how soldier readiness management fits into unit, fits into unit readiness. Uh, so good example, S1s, this is important for you, uh, if you, especially if you go to a brigade S1. How does that, you know, how does it fit in? So this is kind of a tangential example. I had this two-star general come into my office, I'm the OPMD director, and he's upset because he isn't getting the, he isn't getting the fill of people in his unit that he wants. And so I'm like, okay, sir, um, you know, what's the deal? And so he, he explains it to me, and I said, uh, you know, did your, S1 or your G1, your G1 in this case, sit down with you and go over all your requirements and go over your, you know, your critical, um, I, can't, I forget what the name of the little spreadsheet report they do is, but every BCT in the Army does it. And this two-star general had not a single clue, you know, why, why that was. Why? Because his G1 wasn't talking to him. So as a S1, G1, I mean, you are, uh, whether you're the NCOIC or whatever it is, I mean, you're the person kind of at the epicenter of making sure your unit, your sergeant major and the commander know what the requirements are. I mean, that's kind of where it starts and that the commander knows how to convey those requirements to the top of the system. Um, oh, let me, let me, okay, I'm, I'm gonna cut short on that question because I want to give you guys one last example before we get the boot. Uh, overcoming a blip. Um, so, who, had, who in this room had two consecutive, don't raise your hand, two consecutive center of mass OERs? Right? Callaway. So, how's that possible? Oh my God, how'd you, how'd you get promoted? How'd you become a general? I had two consecutive center of mass OERs. Now, some people might not tell you that. Well, you know, whatever. Um, but that's the truth. Uh, so, what I would tell you is, Anybody can overcome a blip, right? You can overcome a setback. And many people think you can't. Oh, if you get one center of mass report, it's all over with. Not true. Uh, so what I would tell you is, if that happens to you, don't feel sorry for yourself. Fight through it. Continue to, again, control the stuff you control. Be the best you can be. Take the hard jobs. Serve where you're asked to serve and work through that. If you start feeling sorry for yourself and saying, oh my gosh, I'm not on the team, no one likes me, um, I can guarantee you that your belief will become your self-fulfilling prophecy. All right, so I saw this happen at every grade up to three-star general when I'm in GOMO, and I've got some three-star general sitting in my office and I'm a colonel saying, you know, Joe, I just don't feel like I'm on the team. I'm like, sir, you're a three-star general. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, I wasn't a core commander and I'm not going to be a four star. It's okay. You're going to be fine. You're on the team. You know? So don't let yourself fall into that trap. Again, if you have a blip, fight through it, uh, overcome it. That's probably some of the most important advice I can, because for almost all of you, it's going to happen at some point. And you just have to have a positive attitude and fight through it. So uh, anyway, I think I'm, I think I'm done. Uh, so I appreciate you guys this time.